Mother Teresa Charity investigated for, quote unquote, forced conversions. Recently, Indian police have started investigating a charity known as Missionaries of Charity, which was started by the notorious Mother Teresa. According to the authorities in the western state of Jugarat, uh, Va Vadodara City, the police are inquiring whether the Missionaries of Charity forced the girls in its shelter home to wear crucifix necklaces and read the Bible. Uh, Mayank Trivedi, a Vadodara district school officer, social officer, stated that his complaint to the police was based on a report by child welfare authorities and other district officials. The missionaries of charity denied the allegations. This investigation comes amidst an environment of increasing anti-Christian violence in India. Al Jazeera cited activists who say that there have been more than 300 anti-Christian incidents in 2021 alone. So I thought that this would be a very interesting story to cover because Mother Teresa is a very controversial figure and her legacy is controversial. And I don't know, I think it's interesting to consider how, um, how to talk about these sorts of things, how to acknowledge and um, be honest about the shady stuff or bad things that her um missions or charity have has done or that she personally did but then also how do you take into account the um very tense and heated social situation that's going on in india where there is a lot of just blatant anti-christian bigotry that's happening and violence against christians it's it's a complicated issue like armin when you hear this what's your first what's your first thought First of all, I'm very glad to know, to see that most of our live chat knows and is aware of how bad Mother Teresa was. Mother Teresa was a monster. If like people don't, people who don't know this. Yeah, like describe it for people who don't know. Like, I mean, I don't want to spend too much time here, but she was obsessed with pain. Like she wanted people to be in misery. Like she didn't want to cure people. She wanted to use their pain and misery to bring them to Christ. And if like she thought that was a good thing for people to be in pain. And and she, I mean, is is horrible. And she she used her, like she wasn't helping people. <laughs> she was making them worse. <laughs> but and at the same time, becoming world famous for it. Like I don't know. I think like you could go read <clears throat> with Christopher Hitchens. He is the main person that highlighted how horrible of a person Mother Teresa was. So it's uh, I mean it's kind of fitting that a um, charity after named after her. Is continuing to, um, you know, you know, keep his, her legacy as as true to her name and everything. However, yeah, I'm. A, this is an issue. Like, how do you bring attention to this while not contributing to anti-Christian discrimination in India? Like, how do you do that? Like, are we being irresponsible by highlighting this with the with given attention to the situation in India? Like, I mean, this is true. This is the news. And then at the same time, like, I mean, people have this collectivist mindset and they want to punish people who, who just happen to be Christian, uh, even though they're, they're not be associated with this at all. I guess the way to be responsible about reporting this is to just be like, hey, this is happening. This is bad. But you are also a monster if you just collectively want to hold any random Christian responsible uh, for these, you know, for stuff like this. Like, you, you know, I mean, I don't know how to address this because collectivism is such a um, such a big part of people's, uh, you know, DNA. Like it's just how our our minds are broken to think like that. So you can't just be like, Hey, cut it out and just expect it for people to cut it out. So are we like, are we part of the problem by highlighting a story like this? I don't know what to do. What, well, what... I don't think so because the whole reason why we're talking about it is to discuss this contention, you know, like that we can have a nuanced conversation by saying, yes, this woman and her legacy is painful and bad. And so we're inclined to be skeptical towards organizations that she founded, right? But we can also say, 
hey, given the environment, this might not be entirely warranted, right? Like the, based on the reports that I was reading, um, it's not clear that there's substantive evidence against this actual organization, you know? Mm. Um, and okay. so I wanted to talk about it so that we could have an honest conversation about this legacy and the influence of Christianity oh, that she brought specifically, but then also be like, well, I'm not too sure about this actual accusation. But even if this accusation is completely true, I'm just, it, it still doesn't like, you know, it sh still shouldn't, like we shouldn't, I, we shouldn't be suggesting that the anti-Christian hatred would be justified, even if this is true. Do you know what I mean? Did, no. did what I said sound like N that? No, no, no. Oh, okay. I mean, Good. yeah, I mean, maybe, I mean, it may be if you're not. I don't know, maybe it could uh, to some people, to idiots. But again, like, okay, so here's how, how you can tell people, okay? Like, if they want to look at this, examples like this, even if it's true, okay? So, and be like, okay, then the Christians are asking for it or whatever. Like, it would, and talk about Christians as if they're all just one unanimous group and, you know, homogenous group of people that are that should be hated or whatever you can tell like you, you, the way you could tell them that this uh, that's unfair is by reminding them that they have people in their group that do things that are that they condemn right like many hindus and even hindutva would be like okay well that person was like a the, like you you see some act actually a lot of time they justify it but i'm hoping most of the time they don't justify um a lot of the worst things they do like for example i don't know like cow vigilantes when they go and attack muslims for slaughtering cows or whatever or selling cows or whatever right there are a lot of Hindutva who come and say, like, well, that's not okay, I guess. Like, maybe we shouldn't be going that far, right? And that doesn't say, like, it's just because some people do it that you can't be, like, all of Hindutva is like this, right? Um, and we're like, okay, well, there you go. <laughs> like, if you want to use that as a, if you want to say that, you know, some Hindutva doing something doesn't mean that we're all responsible it, it, that, that every single Hindu or Hindutva is like a cow vigilante or like extremist, then use the same logic towards towards the. Let me just remove this troll from the live chat. You know, you you get what I'm saying. Yeah, I oh. wanted to give a little bit more information about the actual accusations here. So, um, there was a first information report or FIR that was registered. And um, it was filed by um, the district social defense officer who visited the shelter. And then um, and he, when he did this, he was accompanied by the district's um, child welfare committee chairman. And the complaint claims that they found the girls being forced to read Christian religious texts at the shelter and that similar activities were being conducted with the, quote, intention of steering them into Christianity. Interestingly enough, the organization has been booked under Section 295A of the Indian Penal Code. And for those who are paying attention, you will know that that is India's equivalent of the blasphemy law. And they've also been booked under 298, which is deliberately uttering words to wound the religious feelings of another. Um, they say between February 10th and December 9th of this year, the institution has been involved in activities to hurt the religious sentiments of the Hindus intentionally and with bitterness. The girls inside the home for girls are being lured to adopt Christianity by making them wear the cross around their neck and also placing the Bible on the table of the storeroom used by the girls in order to compel them to read the Bible. This is an attempted crime to force religious conversion upon the girls. And, Wait, how's that um, forced? Well, exactly. And the description of it is so weird. So it's like you have a Bible on a table in like a storage room and that's 
being compelled to okay, read the Bible. Is... Like, that doesn't make sense to me at all. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, okay, so this is not even forced conversion. These people are just making stuff up, right? Well, and what's interesting is that the shelter, in response, they contend that quote the organization's pra- the, the, ch- the girls in the organization at this shelter quote practice as they see us doing the same when we pray and leave we pray and live. So they're saying like, we pray and live. And then the girls see us do it this way. And then they kind of copy us, which is very normal for children, but it's also kind of. In- so these people are just like, okay. Okay. So this is kind of like a, um, love jihad situation, isn't it? Like people are making actively making decisions to be like, this is just my choice. They're like, no, you have no agency. You've been brainwashed and forced into marrying this Muslim. Uh, and now, like, this is like, maybe we have some examples of forced conversion, but I'm, what I'm assuming is that they exaggerate it. And now everybody just like being influenced by any Christian messaging, all of a sudden, I mean, technically children. Technically See, children, that's where it gets, that's where it gets tricky. Yeah. I mean, but these people don't think. I, I mean, uh, okay. What do you I mean, mean these, people, these people? No, okay, no, no. I'm, well, talking right. religious, <laughs> I'm talking about religious people. Religious people are not like making our arguments that oh, children should never be exposed to religion at all. Like it's not like they're coming from that perspective, looking at it from that perspective, right? Um, like they're not coming from this enlightenment position, enlightened position that oh yeah, kids it's brainwashing to expose to to sell religion to kids at, overall. You know, given that they don't have that, I don't think they have that perspective. I think like they're exaggerating how forced this the nature of this is. Like, I mean, are they gonna assume that you know Muslims and Christians are being forced into Hinduism with all this? Hindu symbolism all over India? Like, is that forced conversion as well? Like, no, you can't have. They a, would just th- say that that's part of their civilizational identity. Well, I mean, that's part of also what well, Christianity and Islam is part of their civilizational identity as well. I mean, I don't know. It just, just makes no sense. Well, look at some here. Well, there was one thing I wanted to say. You know, this is really interesting for me to consider because I was someone who was raised in Catholic schools my entire life. I have friends who went to Catholic school in India. And when you go to Catholic school, in my experience, you are exposed to Christian and Catholic texts. It's part of your curriculum. It's part of your rubric of what you have to learn. So in America, that's what's understood when you are embarking on going to a private school to get like if you go to a private religious school this is just part of the package right like we wouldn't conceptualize that as a forced conversion but it's interesting for me to think about um how a a setup or a system like that comes into contention with these anti-conversion laws or sentiment in india like um And I would, it's very clear if you know anything about Catholicism or specifically the Jesuit tradition that they explicitly say that bringing education to people is essentially one of their tools to bring people to Christ. Now, usually they couch it by saying that it's through teaching people, they'll help them, you know, have a better quality of life, but as you being their teacher, you will also, you're supposed to be imbuing and embodying characteristics of Christ and embodying his message in the way that you carry yourself. And that this will inspire people to be curious and to embark upon, you know, gaining the salvation through Christ. So I also can't lie and pretend like that's not um, a, a dynamic of what's going on here. Does that make sense? Yeah, but I think the best, like as uh, Fady, Fady is mentioning in live chat, the name for that is indoctrination, not forced conversion. I think, yes. So here, yes. So we as atheists do have a problem with kids being exposed to religion, but I was like, forced conversion is not the right terminology here. So, but what's in, yeah, that's what we call it. It's indoctrination because just because like, you see Bibles and you're exposed to religious material. You can't just call that forced conversion. 
that is what it's that's why we have an issue with it there's nothing forced here right so i think that's the best okay let's read some live chat comments that i start um, yeah secular rarity is saying i understand the caution armin i think by pointing out the hesitation to instantly condemn this with no context goes a long way in showing you are not for the anti-christian hatred and violence um I for agree. not for the anti-christian hatred for violence yeah but no 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 i don't agree with this because you this suggests that if I was condemning it, then I would be for anti-Christian hatred and violence, right? So there's two different things. First of all, we're skeptical about this being um, a, thing, a forced conversion or not, right? But then the second part is, even if it was a case of forced conversion, that would still not justify any anti-Christian yes. hatred or violence, right? Like, yeah, like let's just, there's two levels here, okay? So there's that. Um, there, here's another one um liberal bengali hindu is saying anti-christian sentiment in india is not so extreme as anti-muslim sentiments what's the use of doing this okay if you mean doing this in terms of us covering the story well one the anti-muslim <laughs> sentiment is so extreme in india that like anything else pales in comparison that doesn't mean it's not worth addressing <laughs> two um there is a um it's well documented that the cases of anti-Christian violence in India is increasing and it's increasing particularly within the past few years. So yes, it's worth talking about. Yeah. I mean, this is a, but what about is like, do, do things have to be the worst pot thing case for us to like, does it have to be like, if you want to talk, like, I don't understand this. Like, if we want to talk about the own, the worst thing, that then we sh we can't do li live streams about anything. We should just all talk about climate change and the possibility of AI taking over. And there's nothing else. Oh jeez. Anybody... <laughs> oh man. <laughs> <laughs> nothing else worth talking about. <laughs> in, in, Pack in up and go home, guys. It's over. <laughs> like, every live stream everywhere on the planet should be either about climate change or AI taking over. That's that's that. That's man, all. I thought this show was already depressing enough. <laughs> 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 all right let's go to this one um fady is saying how conversions are forced to christianity i mean unlike islam new christian converts can simply revert the moment they are out the door yeah there's nothing uh, forced here i yeah. mean it's an it's, it's it's indoctrination that's what it is okay it's nothing nobody's being forced okay there's no penalties for you not coming based on our understanding no one's being yeah forced. based on yeah, no one's and Hindutva Susanna is saying, why do Christians want us to convert in the first place? It's a demographic engineering for political gains. Okay, so um, wow. Okay, the so you don't understand how Christianity works. Um, Hindutva <laughs> Susanna, I would like to explain to you that Christians feel compelled to convert people to Christianity because they believe that through accepting Jesus Christ, they will that that person will achieve salvation and be saved from hell. Now you could talk about the impact or, you know, um, uh, for lack of a better term goals of Christianity as a concept or like, uh, on, on a large scale. Right. But as individuals, Christians who, who are like, they, most of the time, they just genuinely believe that they want what's best for other people. And they think that this is what's best for other people. Now we obviously disagree um i but. mean i mean they, they technically i mean that's technically uh the reason and but how honest people are about it like the christians are different like here's the thing here's i have a problem why do christians want us to want us to convert uh you have too many us's in your state in your sentence hindu for susanna why do christians want to convert us in the in the first place christians are not one group like they're not mm -hmm. they, all the same depends on the christian okay arguably it should be because they care about your eternal soul okay that's what's on paper but individually you can't make a general statement about all christians one christian is different from another like how could you how could you even ask a question like how could you even want, think about an entire group of people like that okay 
and then say it's demographic engineering for political gains. Look how stupid your claim is. You're making a judgment on an entire, like the most popular, the most, the largest uh, religion in the world, and you're coming up with a judgment for all of them at the same time. Like you are dumb. Okay, you are. This is a dumb statement. Okay, and another thing, the level of self-awareness when coming from Hindutva. <laughs> They're, like they're doing this for demographic engineering. Like, look in the mirror. <laughs> look in the goddamn mirror. But it's like, me. It's, what if it's I looked the, in the mirror and it's Hindu Susie looking back? And it's, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, Hindu oh, is defined as more of a political ideology than the religious one. Any anyway, like it's like it's designed to be. It de- oh my god. Anyways, I don't want to go further. Yeah, it's not worth it. Um, you know, like it's 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 even more fair to generalize the the goal for Hindutva than it is for Christians, right? Because like Islam, Hindutva is a political ideal is inherently more political. Like I, I understand that Christianity is also political in some senses, and Hinduism has a lot of politics in it as well. But being so like when it comes to being very politically centered and making the ideology um have a very like the political goals of the ideology being front and center being front and center you don't get that with the hinduism or christianity you get that with islam and hindutva okay so these having these goals um yeah hindutva look at look in the mirror so anyways here's another one and then we have to move on soon Katie is saying, my school had us go to the chapel every day and also pray our father and gave us copies of the New Testament. As much as I hate religion and education, is it forced conversion now? Mm. I mean, Katie is an atheist, so I guess it was if it was forced, then how is she an atheist? <laughs> <laughs> so, like it i mean like it is like somebody saying not forced lol we'll give you food if you come to church no church okay good luck um so they're giving out food to poor people so i mean you're, is that like is that but here's the thing they're <laughs> saying that there is a form of religious compulsion in the distribution of these services now i mean and it'd be stupid you don't to have act to... like forced conversion didn't happen in christian history obviously like just check out the spanish missions in california but well i think it's completely unethical let me be clear i think it's completely yeah. unethical to have a religious compulsion in the distribution of services just saying you have to go to church and like listen to a liturgy that's not actually making you a christian like they're not baptizing you they're not giving first reconciliation and then first communion right or they're not doing the full catechism well that's for catholics how could you force anybody to become a christian you could literally just go there and do a prayer and get the food and get out and be like psych <laughs> well okay Christ- <laughs> first conversions definitely did happen in christianity obviously okay yes but this is not yes exactly this is not an example of it people used to be burned alive <laughs> i mean i'm not endorsing this if you want to help poor people just give them food you don't have to make a you don't have to don't make them go through prayers and stuff like i mean technically it's, technically it's better than nothing it's better than not giving them food right it's not like they had it's not like if you didn't do this they would have food automatically right um i mean if this is i mean i guess it i guess they would have food if this is tax exempt and these people are not paying their fair share of taxes and this could have gone to a government service that would not be religious not be conditioned on religion so yeah it is harmful we don't endorse it but it's it's not forced conversion it's bad for other reasons just because we say it's not forced conversion that doesn't mean it's good it is bad but for other reasons um you can't you know you can't like make people like can you force somebody to believe two plus two is five like try it can you force yourself to believe two plus two is five it's impossible there are some wild postmodernists out there who really get into that no but they're not forced into it they're <laughs> exactly. they're, they're volunteering you can never force anybody to believe anything it's impossible it's like yeah anyways that's this one um Secure writer say no. I was saying that giving context is a way that shows that you are against the violence, not the condemnation. Yeah, I, I yeah. understand. I understood what you meant. 
And interestingly enough, secularity is saying the Mormons in Utah offer social services, but, but they require that people join the temple before giving them services. God damn, how are they tax exempt? That's so crazy. Like, don't even get me started on my opinions on Catholic NGOs and how they operate in Africa, for example. It's horrendous, okay? Mm. Like, in our American taxpayer dollars goes towards like organizations like that. So I don't want people to think that I'm um, totally fine with this construction. Um, I, I have so many issues with it. Um, yeah, I think that'd be an interesting conversation, like topic to have a larger conversation about sometime. Yeah. Because it's so complex. I, I, by the way, I do want to ask uh, people who say that th some of these examples are forced conversion to Christianity. I want to ask them, what would it look like if they were advocating for Christianity and were enforcing people? Like, what Ooh. would it look like to them? Because I'm assuming mm -hmm. these people, any any advocacy for people to become Christian, I'm assuming a lot of these Hindutva, they would categorize all of it as forced conversion. So like, show, tell me what it would be. <laughs> like, if you can't if you can't put a, a Bible in front of everybody, somebody to be like, oh, this is for con forced conversion, then how is a Christian supposed to invite you to Christianity? without being forced like i, don't know, I think like, a better term would be like incentivized conversion and I do think if it's children indoctrination say indoctrination but no but well. let's say that it's adults for receiving services like incentivized um conversion like i think that's unethical and that has mm. happened particularly in the indian subcontinent historically right this is a good comment um, Katie is saying, meanwhile, many Hindu politicians do want schools to teach the Vedas and the Gitas so students can learn, quote, true Indian values. Oh, geez. Okay. This is forced <laughs> because you have, this is forced. That's indoctrination. No, well, I mean, this is actually technically also forced because you don't have to go to the church. You could be like, you know what? Shove your food up your what, whatever. But school, you can't, you can't avoid going to school. Right. So anyways. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.